Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Netflix is mainstream media, right? Netflix has over 200 million subscribers worldwide. So this is not the uh, how many people watch uh, WWE content on, on Peacock, you know, up to a million and a half or whatever. This is not that tiny, tiny audience. You're going to have the Netflix algorithm, and this is why they paid so much money for this doc. You're going to have that algorithm feed this story of a pro wrestling crazy man to casual Netflix viewers. Netflix has the most engagement of any of these platforms. So this thing is going to be in the news cycle. And when the Janelle Grant, when the Wall Street Journal articles came out, it was in the, in the news cycle. But then it would kind of go away. Then Vince would do something. And then he was back. And then Stephanie quit. And then... You know, finally we got the lawsuit and then it was back in the news cycle. This Netflix thing, for as long as things can stay in the pop culture zeitgeist, they don't stay very long anymore. Hmm. But six hours of a show dropped on a Wednesday in late September, September when we were younger, that's when all the new shows, the new seasons of the new shows would drop. Raw's coming to Netflix in January. Uh, SmackDown is back on USA in September. NXT is moving off of USA in October. So there's a lot of moving pieces around this time frame. And oh, by the way, a six-hour documentary on the uh, on the president and CEO of WWE who is in a lawsuit right now for uh being a you know a, a, a sexual offender is about to drop on the biggest streaming platform going right now like that i think this thing this story more people are going to be aware of what this story is and it's going to sit in the in in the the pop culture zeitgeist and in the news cycle for a little bit longer than I think is going to make WWE comfortable. And I think they they need to be ready. They need to be ready with information. They need to be ready about distancing se themselves from Vince. It's no longer about oh you know I didn't have time to read this lawsuit. I thought Cody's hmm. answer was it was as good as he was going to give. He tried. An answer. He tried. I, st I still I still don't know why they don't have like a thing that they've memorized about how to answer this. Like that is part of this crisis stuff that we're talking about. So at the end of the day, I think this thing could be very harmful for WWE, which is why they need to be ready for it. And they need to have those press releases out and they need to start coaching their talent because this thing is coming up again and they have to be ready because real uh, entertainment is covering this thing now. It's not just yeah. a, a pro wrestling, um, you know, reporter at, uh, at at a press conference of your show where ninety five percent of that press conference is people cheerleading, and then you get one serious question. So this is a much different thing, and I hope I really really hope that they're ready for it. And, and you know, this is a it's a fascinating industry because. Who covers pro wrestling? Fans. <laughs> yeah, Fans. pretty much. And it, it, it's, you know, it's not really covered by, and again, there's a few. There's a handful of real deal journalists that cover it. But at the end of the day, we all started off as fans. Again, I'm not a journalist. I I happen to hear things and I have relationships based on my, my business. But I, you know, you have a few people with integrity, but at the end of the day, everybody's a fan. And I, I think it's very difficult to, to a lot of people to discuss this openly and honestly, without your bias showing, listen, I don't touch the Janelle Grant stuff. It, it's, it's rare for me because I, I understand the complexity of these things. I don't, uh, lawsuits are lawsuits. 
most of the time i i hope this is true i i hate i i weirdly enough i hope it is true rather than fall you know falsified and a money grab and whatever the accusations on the other side are um because it ruins the integrity of this whole legal process really mm -hmm. when that happens i i stay away from that unless i have facts i don't like to report or talk about in a what if or assuming or thinking you know obviously we said the accusations are terrible we've heard these stories about vince for years but for a lot of people there is a blurred line here and i think that is always vince's defense and that's always going to be his defense about his character there's a blurred line you know the character of mr mcmahon and the person vince mcmahon uh the line is blurred because he's such a mastermind Mm -hmm. He's such a tremendous mastermind of entertainment where he's blurred this line where you don't know. And I'm yeah, and you know what? There is a sense of reality to that because I've spoken to people that have been in meetings with Vince that are not from wrestling, that know Vince through whatever media relationship they've had. And that's always been the thing. The guy is wild. You don't know if you're getting a character or a person, depending on the day and what he wants to do and if he wants to make you feel uncomfortable. It's it is a fascinating story to tell, and I am really interested in this document. I want to see how they present this.